Goblin launch detected. Hey gang, and welcome back. Just so you know, you can use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, one word, at flipsidegaming.com to get 10% off orders $10 or more. You can also use the promo code at Original Magic Art on everything except for paintings. And finally, you can use the code at mtg.multizone.ca to get 10% off of your orders of singles. Using the code will help you save some money and help out the channel at the same time. Just to let you know, Flipside Gaming is going to be giving away a full set of Commander 2019 when it releases to one lucky winner. The contest will be running from July 12th until August 26th, and all you have to do to enter is either use my promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, no spaces, on an order of over $10 or more, or you can send a stamped, self-addressed envelope or postcard to Flipside Gaming. It's one entry per person, so good luck, have fun, and I hope you win. Today's game is another one filmed at a secret location, and kaka kaka, it's Kiker, played by Adam. He keeps a Dispel, a Sahili, a Fault Line, a Ponder, City of Brass, and a Bloodstained Mire. Turn up the tunes, it's Titania coming your way, and I'm keeping a Nature's Claim, a Snow-Covered Forest, a Soul Ring, a Crystal Veins, Rishkar's Expertise, Myriad Landscape, and Woodland Bellower. Mastering the mystical arts of magic, Scott has the Maelstrom Wanderer again, and he's keeping a Crater Hoof Behemoth, a Heart Warden, a Reclamation Sage, Llanowar Elves, Arid Mesa, Mountain, and a Wild Growth. And last but not least, I feel bad for him because I really don't know what else to say about Yuriko, but Peter's playing Yuriko. He keeps a Flooded Strand, an Island, a Swamp, Time Warp, Malicious Affliction, Limdil's Vault, and Sabo's Decree. Peter wins the die roll and starts us off. Peter plays a flooded strand, cracking it for a land and passing to Scott. Scott plays an arid mesa, cracking it to find a taiga, but puts out a wild growth first before looking for the card and passing. Adam plays an island and ponders. He rearranges the top three and passes to me. I play a tap myriad landscape, passing to Peter. Peter plays an island and passes. Scott plays a mountain, and out comes an elvish archdruid. Adam drops his own copy of Flooded Strand, cracking it and taking one. He finds a hollowed fountain, taking two more life loss to have it come in untapped. He then plays a Soulfire Grandmaster before passing turn. I play a snow-covered forest and cast Soul Ring. I pass to Peter, who at my end step uses Limdol's Vault. He looks at his top five and bottoms them, losing one life to look at his next top five. He likes those, and so he shuffles his library and puts those five in the order of his choosing on top. Peter brainstorms in his main phase, drawing three and putting two back. He drops a Morphic Pool as his land for turn before passing to Scott. Scott plays a forest and casts Heart Warden. We then see Atlanta War Elves come in, and I hope someone has let Scott know that someone scribbled all over his cards. He pays 3 by tapping an Archdruid to cast a Reclamation Sage, who enters and targets my Soul Ring. With the ability on the stack, I crack my Myriad Landscape with the Soul Ring to find two snow covered forests before letting it go. Adam plays a Sacred Foundry, taking 2 to have it come in untapped. He taps out for Sahili and passes. I draw for turn and cast Corsair of Crufix. I reveal a Coast Cutter off the top, playing it and gaining one life, and then reveal a Dust Bowl. I pass to Peter. Peter plays a Swamp and passes. Scott draws, and the table discusses how thankful we are that he doesn't have blue at this point, as Scott casually plays an island. He casts the Maelstrom Wanderer with no responses from anyone. Scott cascades into a Birds of Paradise, and then a Fierce Empath. With the Empath entering, he gets to tutor for a card, and finds Dragonlord Atarka putting her to hand. Scott then taps the birds in a forest for a Coiling Oracle, revealing an ancient tomb and putting it to his field. Heading to combat, the elves head at Peter for six, while the Wanderer goes at Adam. Adam blocks with his Grandmaster, and before leaving the combat step, Peter casts Malicious Affliction and takes out Maelstrom and my Corsair, 
after Adam has volunteered the information that he can take out Scott's mana dorks. Adam plays a City of Brass and passes to me. I play a Crystal Veins, cracking it to help pay for my Woodland Bellower. I tutor through my library for a green 3-drop and put out Ramunak Excavator. I then pass to Peter. Peter plays a Mana Confluence as his land for turn and passes. At the end of turn, Adam casts Fault Line where X is 2. This triggers Sahili on cast, giving Adam a token, who then dies along with most of the board as the Fault Line resolves, dealing 2 to each creature without flying and 2 to each player. Before the damage is dealt though, Scott takes 2 from his Ancient Tomb to sacrifice the Warden and draw a card. Scott casts Beast Color Savant in his main phase and taps out for Dragonlord Atarka, taking 2 from the Ancient Tomb. She comes in and deals enough to the Ramunap to take it out and deals the rest to Sahili. Adam plays a Bloodstained Mire and cracks it. He finds a Steam Vents, taking 2 to have it come in untapped. Kakar then joins the fray and Adam loses 2 life from a Gataxian Probe. This gives him a Spirit from Kakar and a Servo from Sahili. He then looks at Peter's hand and draws a card. I play Snow Covered Forest and cast Titania. She enters and brings back the Crystal Vein as I pass my turn. Peter plays a Scroll Rack in his main phase, activating it once it resolves. He sets aside all but one card and draws that many before putting the cards set aside on top of his library. Peter then drops an island and loses one life to hardcast Yuriko, which just seems wrong. Scott pays 5 in his main phase for an Acidic Slime, who comes in and blows up the Scroll Rack. He then drops a Cure as Follower, and bops me with a Tarka in his combat step. Adam drops Goblin Bombardment in his main phase, gaining another set of tokens. He then pays 2 for the Talisman of Conviction, gaining another set of 2 tokens. Heading to combat, Kakar hits Scott for 3 commander damage, and Adam then passes. I draw for turn and play another Snow Covered Forest. I crack the veins to help pay for Rishkar's expertise, gaining an elemental token as the land goes to my yard. I draw 6 cards, and then get to cast Escape Shift for free. With the spell in the stack, Adam sacrifices 3 servos to Goblin Bombardment, killing Titania. However, before the final damage is dealt, I sacrifice my Ghost Quarter to take out Adam's Steam Vents and let him find a basic, gaining another 5-3 elemental token before Titania goes to the command zone. I then resolve my scape shift, sacrificing all of my lands and finding that many. I grab a Thespian Stage, a Dark Depths, Command Beacon, and two Snow Covered Forests. I want to attack Adam, but he's got too many blockers at this point to do any real damage, so I pass to Peter. Peter casts Sword of Feast and Famine, which resolves. He's worried that Adam will kill Yuriko with Bombardment, so he casts Submerge for free to bounce one of the Spirit Tokens. Not wanting to lose the option of doing what Peter is afraid of, Adam in turn sacrifices those very tokens to take out Yuriko, and with nothing else, Peter passes. Scott draws return and pays 2 for a Fauna Shaman. He taps out, taking 2 from the tomb, and takes another 2, untapping the ancient tomb with his Cura's follower. This is enough mana for a Creator of Behemoth, which he'd had since his opening hand, and it resolves. It pumps his board by plus 7 plus 7 and gives everything trample. Moving to combat, he swings 22 points of damage in the air at me, the Crater Hoof at Adam for 12, and the Slime at Peter for 9. That's the most modest Crater Hoof behemoth I've ever seen in my entire life. Adam plays Perforos in his main phase, getting two token triggers, who enter thankfully before the god does, and Adam then passes. I play a Snow-Covered Forest for my turn, and pass. At the end of turn, Peter loses one to the Mana Confluence to cast Vampiric Tutor, but Adam is quick to counter it with the spell. This gives Adam two more tokens, who come in and trigger Perforoth, each dealing damage for a total of four damage to each of Adam's opponents, and the tutor is then countered. Peter pays five in his main phase for a time warp, giving himself another turn, and he passes to his next turn. Peter draws another card, but with not much going on, has to pass. Scott draws and takes two from the tomb to recast his Wanderer. He cascades into a Crucible of Worlds, and then a Vizier of the Menagerie, which are some pretty fair cascades. Scott then looks at his top card, and checks again to make sure it hasn't changed. He replays his Arid Mesa, cracking it, and taking one to find a mountain. Scott then casts a Bloom Tender off the top, thanks to the Vizier. Heading to combat, Scott swings three points at Peter, 
and 25 points at me. Before moving to blockers, I make the Thespian stage a copy of Dark Depths, resolving the legendary rule issue by sacrificing the original. The now counterless Thespian stage version of Dark Depths then sees it has no counters, and sacrifices itself to make a Merit Lage token. I then block a Tark with the token, and the Crater Hoof and Wanderer with my elemental tokens, and the Woodland Bellower with the Vizier. I still take two though unfortunately from the slime, and Scott then passes. Adam casts Talisman of Creativity, which gives him a token from both Kakar and Sahili. The tokens then enter, dealing four to each of Adam's opponents, and this takes me out. Heading to combat, Kakar hits Scott again, and Adam passes after that. At the end of turn, Peter casts Sabo's Decree, naming elves and targeting Scott. Scott reveals an Inferno Titan in his hand, and then loses the elves that are on his board, and we move to Peter's turn. Peter pays 5 mana in his main phase for Dark Petition, having Spell Mastery active, and gaining 3 black mana while searching for his card. He then uses the floating black mana and 1 blue to cast Ninja of the Deep Hours. With nothing else, he passes to Scott. Scott draws and replays his Arid Mesa from the yard again. He then taps 6 mana for an Inferno Titan, and I'm not too worried about taking any damage from the Enter the Battlefield effect, because I'm already dead. Instead, Scott puts the targets on Kakar, which Adam responds to by sacrificing his commander to the bombardment and dealing one to Scott's bird. Before the damage is dealt though, Scott taps the bird for mana, and then uses that mana to cast an expedition map once everything's resolved. Heading to combat, the acidic slime goes at Adam for two, which he takes, and Scott passes. Adam draws and recasts his commander. He heads to combat and hits Scott for two with his spirit tokens. In his post-combat main phase, Adam then turns one of his talismans into a servo by down ticking Sahili, and shoots Scott for one with a goblin bombardment by sacrificing the talisman now made token servo. Peter plays a swamp and casts spell twine in his main phase. He targets time warp and Adam's ponder. The spell twine then resolves and Peter casts ponder. He looks at his top three and decides to shuffle and then draw. He then gives himself another turn with the time warp and moves to his second turn. Peter draws a card in his extra turn, and then passes to Scott. At the end of turn, Scott untaps his taiga with the follower, and taps the taiga to crack his map, and goes to find a cradle putting it to hand. Scott plays his cradle for turn, tapping it and then untapping it with the follower to retap it again. He's once again able to make enough mana to cast the Maelstrom Wanderer, and this time cascades into a Wirewood Channeler, and then a Momir Vig. Scott then heads to combat, swinging everything at Adam. The Inferno Titan trigger goes off, dealing 2 to the ninja and 1 to his spirit, which Adam sacrifices, dealing 1 to Scott thanks to the Goblin Bombardment. Adam then blocks the Titan with his active Perforos, and puts the two servos in front of the Wanderer and the Slime, and before damage is dealt, pings Scott for 2. Scott then passes, and at the end of turn, Peter overloads the Cyclonic Rift, taking 1 from his Mana Confluence, and Adam pings him for 1 with the Spirit token. Adam plays an Island and recasts the Healy. He then drops the Talisman, gaining a Servo token before passing. Peter plays a Swamp, and hard casts Yuriko again in his main phase. He gears her up with a Sword before passing to Scott. Scott plays a Sulphur Falls as his land for turn, and pays 5 for an Acidic Slime. It comes in and blows up the Sword. Scott then recasts his Cure's Follower and passes to Adam. Adam draws and recasts Perforos. There's not a counter to be seen, and the God then resolves. Adam then plays a Mox Amber, gaining a servo token and dealing two to his opponents from Sahili. We then see Goblin Bombardment hidden the stack, and with Sahili's trigger going off, Adam responds to his own spell, using Arcane Denial to counter the enchantment, and gains another Sahili trigger. The two tokens then enter, dealing four and taking out Peter and Scott. Game review time. Unfortunately, I think I played really badly in this game, and I didn't even attack once with Titania or any of my elementals. I think that was a huge misstep on my part considering how aggressive my deck is supposed to be, and I probably should have considered looking for the Glacial Chasm when I used my Scape Shift to find all those lands. Simply put, the Maelstrom Wanderer is an incredible card advantage engine. You're always going to get three things off of casting him once, regardless of his cost. It's honestly what helps the deck feel so consistent, and as we saw with Scott's deck today, a lot of the cards that you'd see in the past you saw again today. This was unfortunately the worst showing I think for Peter's Yuriko deck that we've ever had on camera, and it's really tough to say what went wrong. Unfortunately, he didn't really get very much value out of his two extra turns from the time warp, and even though the Cyclonic Rift was probably the right play, it unfortunately gave Adam enough ammo to finish off the table when he did. 
Speaking of Adam, Kakar has really gotten me scratching my head in terms of what Jeskai commander I want to be using. The amount of versatility that the tokens offer is incredible. Being able to sacrifice them to something like Goblin Bombardment for damage or just to Kakar for mana is huge. Plus you always have them as blockers. I'm going to have to do some serious testing and see if Zedru's going to make the cut moving forward. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.